All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how do we analyze Facebook ads data for lead gen Facebook ads campaign. You see, Running ads is actually the easiest part. Everybody with a Facebook profile can create an ad account and immediately start pairing with your credit card and start running ads because that's what Facebook wants you to do, right? But essentially, how do you find out whether your campaign is doing good or not? You see, some people actually just say, ah, as long as it's getting me results that I want, I don't mind letting it go and stuff like that. But look, here's the thing. If you do not know whether the, you know, if you do not know why the campaign is doing good, if it is doing good, if it's, you know, generating result that, you know, you're actually pretty satisfied with. If you do not know why it is, it is doing good, you won't be able to, you know, leverage on what's already working and uh, make more money out of it. You know, how do you scale? You know, if you do not know what's working, how do you scale? If you do not know what's you know, lacking, how do you actually avoid making the same mistake? That's on the other side. If you have a campaign that is not working, what most people do is they'll just kill the campaign, correct? Now, in my opinion, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to do, but look, what are you actually missing is you lose the opportunities to really learn what is not working so that you can avoid making the same mistake in the new campaign that you're building. Otherwise, you'll be like in the loop. You're actually doing the same thing over and over again, over and over again. What's the point, right? So that's what something that I want to really emphasize. So in this training, Sam, I'm going to share with you my framework of analyzing Facebook ads campaign because I've worked with thousands of advertisers from all around the world. That's what I do day in, day out since 2010. So um, I'm going to show you how do we analyze. So I'm just going to bring up my screen. Okay, so this is the Facebook ads manager. So if you run ads on Facebook, this is something that, you know, this is something that you should be very familiar with. You know, then uh, you have all these, like, as you can see, you have campaigns tab, ad set tab, and ads, and uh, these are all the metrics coming in. So when you are running a campaign, you know, usually you will start with the performance column, which uh, these are the metrics that you are looking at, right? So what Facebook is showing you here is uh, they will show you the results, the reach, you know, impressions, cost per results, amount spent, and the ending. Now, these are the base metrics, I call them. Now, I'm not saying that the base metrics are useless, but they do not really tell you whether your campaign is doing good or not. They do not really tell you uh, what are the, you know, like essential things, like let's say whether the ads is doing good, you know, so a lot of people actually ask this question, but they do not really know how to identify or to, to understand whether the ad creative is working for them or not. All right. So I'm going to help you pull out a few key metrics. So watch me play and I want you to take notes. And even if you're watching this video, you want to pause this and go back to your ads manager to do whatever that we are doing here. Feel free to pause the video. You can actually watch this video as many times as you want. We're going to not, we're not going to kill this video anyway. So how do we pull out the essential data? Uh, click on performance columns and all the way down, click on customize columns. Okay. So once you are in customized columns, um, as you can see, there are like tons of metrics over here available. You can just click around. You have page posts, messaging, media, clicks, and whatnot, right? So feel free to play with it. There are a lot of things over here, but I'm I'm gonna pull out things that I use. So yeah, the first time, the first thing I'm gonna get like CTR. Okay, so I'm gonna get CTR or CTR link click. And then after that, uh, we're gonna take like CPM. Okay, and then we're gonna take uh, frequency. All right, and CPM frequency, what else? Uh, yeah, then we're going to take clicks. So we're going to take clicks, all link clicks, unique and outbound. Eventually, uh, for certain scenario, because today we're going to talk about lead generation, right? So if you are doing lead form on Facebook, then of course you want to go for results or you can actually go by lead. All right, you can actually go by lead. Otherwise, if you are actually doing a landing page, okay, the con you can actually continue with, of course, landing page and then followed by lead, depending on how you want to do it, right? So I'm just going to pull out like, let's say after landing page, then we have lead. Now that's for, uh, if provided if you have landing page. And then of course, if you are doing like uh, WhatsApp lead gen or messenger lead gen, then you can actually do like message, messages, um, um, new messaging connection or mess messaging conversation started, depending on how, uh, which one is more relevant to you. So yeah, I'm just going to apply this thing. And then uh, you have all these data coming in at the, you know, followed by all these data. So, uh, yeah, I don't have data over here. I'm just going to come in and uh, we're going to quickly go into some, 
you know, some data that I extracted from some of the old campaigns that I did, and I'm just going to use those data to analyze. So yeah, the topic is about analysis, right? Analyzing Facebook ads data. So this one is about lead gen. Okay, first thing first, we're going to talk about the base metrics, which are these four things, okay? So as this is basically the uh, so-called the um, default performance metrics that you see, you have results, you have reach, you have impressions, and you have cost per result. Now, from these few data or these few metrics over here, I want to highlight to you a few things. First thing first, your cost per result, okay, is not really the cost that you're paying to run ads on Facebook. Okay, we're going to get to the real cost that is that 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 actually kind of like you're paying, but the cost per result is actually an average cost per result as in like, okay, now you have 29 leads today, and then uh, you're paying X amount of money. So on average, each lead is about 38 ringgit over here. Now, if you are actually, if you hit into some days where your result is bad, and you know, you're not getting as much, I mean, let's say if you're spending still as much money, but the result drops, the cost per result will increase actually not because the the advertisement gets more expensive. That's what I want to highlight. Okay. Uh, these are just an average numbers that you're seeing right now. And reach is really the amount of people that you reach based on the duration that you're selecting. And impressions is how many times um, these people that you reach, like 11,000 over here, have seen your ads in total. So based on what we're seeing over here, 11,000 people have seen your ads for like 21,000 times. So that's the difference between reach and impressions, just in case you're not too sure about it. Then we're going to look into some additional metrics. Remember, I pull out CTR. You know, these are the two sets of CTR that I pull out CTR all, CTR link click, CPM, and frequency. So for CTR all, right, this is actually the percentage of people who click on any part of the advertisement. So any part means what? When you're running ads on Facebook and Instagram, you have to understand there are many things people can, people can click on. They can click on the call to action button, of course. Uh, they can also click on the play video play button like button or even to click on your profile to go over to see whether this 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 business is for real or not so ctr all consists of all the clicks now ctr link clicks is really the percentage of people who click on the call to action button now the differences over here is this okay uh ctr all means everything ctr link click is you know so we have a benchmark for these two sets of numbers benchmark for ctr all is two percent and the benchmark for ctr link click is one percent these are benchmark. It's not calf on the stone, right? Some people will say, hey, my, my numbers are low. You know, my CTR is low and CTR link clicks are low. Uh, how do I do something like this? Now, if you want to optimize or improve your CTR, okay, one of the best approaches to actually change and test new creatives. Usually CTR is a, is a, is a, is a I mean, these are the metrics that kind of like let you know whether your creative is engaging enough to get people to take action or not. So whether to get people to take action, there are a few angles to look into, right? Different creative direction, different color scheme, different background, okay? Different design approach might change. Different format might actually do a difference over here. Or even you actually kind of change the first two lines of your copywriting with a stronger call to action, something like that. That could help you improve the CTR. But these are things that you need to actually grab, uh, test for a period of time. Let's say this week we are testing the, you know, like new creative then you have to let it sink in for at least a week. Usually that's what we do, right? Give it some time. So CTR all benchmark is 2%. CTR link click benchmark is 1%. However, if you see lower numbers, as long as the result is doing good, then you know sometimes um, we might want to kind of like look at some other metrics to determine what are the other things that we can do. But CTR all and link click are important metrics to help you determine your, your the engagement level. I mean, how engaging is your content? Then followed by CPM. Now, CPM is really the amount, the, the so-called, the, you know, the, the advertising cost that you're paying to run ads on Facebook. <laughs> CPM stands for cost per thousand impression. Now, essentially, when you're running ads on Facebook, you pay every time they show your ad to your audience, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, and whatnot. So every time it shows, you pay. That's the reason why you need to make sure that you're actually getting results. That's the reason why we want to make sure that the CTR is doing good. Otherwise, we are throwing money into the ocean. So CPM is something that fluctuates according to the market condition. When there are times where there are more people running ads in the market, the CPM will increase. Okay? And then uh, when there are times where like, now this is actually what we call, as we are making this video, right? After a festive season, usually we will have a, a period that we call the you know advertisers holiday where this is the time uh, that, you know, there are lesser advertisers in the market. That's why you actually can enjoy lower CPM. 
So this is the time you can actually do different kind of experiment if you want to do it. So CPM is one of the culprit that causes your ad cost to, you know, to increase. That's the reason why, you know, when, when your cost per lead or cost per result is increasing, uh, a lot of people will think that it's the creative, it's the audience, right? Most people will go and change these two things. But what I'll do is I'll probably come and look, look at the movement of CPM. You know, I would see whether is it because of the market that is causing the fluctuation. Otherwise, um, you know, we might make the wrong decision. If you queue a campaign that is doing good, but just because the CPM increased uh, for a certain period of time and you get a lower result and you thought that it's the audience that is going wrong or the creative that is going wrong, then you might make wrong decision. Is it the reason why we do all this, you know, learning and analytical learning is really to help us make the right decision if you see the whole idea of doing this. Okay, so CPM is something that we have to monitor. You need to keep your own benchmark for your own campaign. All right, and the frequency is really how many times during this period of time that you're selecting, how many, how many times your audience have seen your ad. So um, there are two different scenarios over here. So when we are actually doing a top of funnel campaign, for example, we want to keep the frequency below two because when we are keeping the frequency below two, essentially, um, we are allowing this campaign or this ad set to reach more people, more new people instead of you know, keep reaching back to the same person over and over again, which can be a budget waste. If you think about it, you know, some people who have taken action, if you do not know how to push these people out, they will be seeing the same ads again and again, and it will definitely create ad fatigue and people will start disliking your brand. So frequency is something that you need to control. Now, however, for bottom of funnel campaign, you know, let's say if you do retargeting and all that, we actually have a little bit of tolerance for the frequency. Sometimes we can allow up to like three to five. And in certain time, like say, for example, if you have like a one week kind of sale coming in, you really want to pump the frequency, we can actually allow it to go up to 10, but you need to really monitor the frequency or going overboard may not really help you get better result at the retargeting side. Sometimes we have seen it so many times. Sometimes when you reduce the budget in your retargeting campaign, you can actually get better result. You'll be surprised because knowing, I mean, testing to the right frequency is kind of like an art that we have to keep monitoring and optimizing and see which one will be the ideal frequency for retargeting. Yeah, so that's the you know additional metrics that we look into. Then the next step, what we will do is, you know, we will actually illustrate the action funnel, which is we are trying to see, we will try to draw out the entire journey on how our audience travel from being a stranger into a lead. And we will try to zoom in and see which are the areas that kind of like, you know, creating a dip that we see a dip, let's say from landing page to you know, like the, the lead submission, then, you know, we want to identify, uh, you know, where are the areas that our audiences are really dropping so that we can actually fix the hole over here. So let's say if you're running a lead form, lead form is generally a lot more straightforward. So over here, if let's say, for example, we have 334 clicks, including clicking on the like button and all, 123 of them are link click. So, okay, then we will look at the unique link click. So unique link click and link click, the differences between here is, Unique link click means how many people have click and versus link click is their yeah, total click. So as you can see, some people out of these 114 people click more than once. Um, as long as the difference here is not too big and we can actually tolerate, but if you see something like 123 link clicks, for example, performed by 50 people, then you need to really look into fixing your frequency. You might be having higher frequency that you're actually overreaching a certain group of people that may not be you know, giving you an optimized outcome over here in the campaign. So yeah, so that's something that we look into. And then of course, we come into the leads. From 123 link clicks, we generated about 29 leads. I would say this is actually not too bad because um, based on our benchmarking, usually we want to have like at least 20%, you know, moving from the step prior to the next step. So 123 link clicks generated 20, 29 leads. That's generally about 20 over percent. So that's idea. But if you have like 123 link clicks and you have like 10 leads, uh, that's not entirely bad. But what could go wrong? Then we probably have to look into the lead form. It could be the lead form that is a little bit complex that, that might be drawing people off, you know, to stop them from submitting a lead. Or it could be because of certain disconnection in between. Or, you know, yeah, we need to identify the area. That's why knowing the numbers over here allows us to really dive into the right thing to look into. So this is when we are actually dissecting a lead form campaign. Now, if you're having a landing page, then we have a little bit more numbers to look into. 
So 334 links, uh, clicks all, 123 link clicks performed by 114 people. And the outbound is 122. So, okay, now I want you to look at this outbound from link click to outbound. Now, link click means how many clicks and outbound is really the number where Facebook uh, uh, captured how many really leave Facebook environment or Instagram environment, um, you know, from the ad itself. So you don't want to have a very high discrepancy over here. Say you have 123 link click and the outbound was 50. Then something is not right. We need to identify. So outbound is really the benchmark. This is the, you know, like the borderline. When you go outbound means, you know, beyond that is beyond Facebook, meaning the landing page will come in already. So from outbound to landing, you can see like we have 122 and 98 landing. That's actually an idea number. Uh, in fact, our benchmark from outbound to landing should be at least 50%. Otherwise, uh, we probably have to look into your website loading time. Is it because of the you know, loading time is too long that causes people to drop off and something like that? So this is where we kind of like look at other, as, you know, like different possibilities to fix the entire funnel over here. Then from landing to leads, um, the idea is like I said just now 20%. So yeah, so basically this is quite a, quite a healthy number coming in. But if you see like the landing is like a 98 and then the lead is two, for example, then you probably have to look into the landing overall. Maybe it is actually not helping you to, you know, inform the audience and really convince them to take the action that you want. So basically, these are the metrics that we will look into when we are analyzing a lead gen campaign. So yeah, I gave you two um, examples over here, which is one is a lead form. The other one is landing page. But of course, I understand uh, if you're doing messenger conversation kind of thing, uh, you can still use back similar idea. But, you know, you really want to draw out the entire customer journey to try to identify. So that's how I analyze um, you know, Facebook ads campaign. So what we do here is the reason why we analyze, like I mentioned just now at the very beginning, we want to know what is working or what is not working. And we want to fix one thing at a time. The idea, I mean, this is my methodology, right? I fix one thing at a time. So we build hypothesis, okay? And then we prove them right or wrong. So the idea situation is we prove one thing at a time. Let's say this week, I'm testing the creative, for example. I'm pulling in new creative. So we will usually give it a week to see up uh, by next week, do we have a you know improved CTR, all right? If we have an improved CTR, that means that it's working. If it, otherwise, then we probably have to look at something else. And then um, once we tested this, the next week we probably will test something else. Like for example, we will probably go into uh, you know, the landing page. You know, we test landing page. Remember you test one thing at a time. Reason being is, let's say if you test multiple things at one time, you may not, I mean, I would say may not, I mean, you, you cannot really identify which one is working, which one is not. That's why this is a very important mentality and mindset that I want to share with you if you're running ads on Facebook sometimes. Um, it takes time to optimize but you will get there. That's why we test one thing at a time. Sometimes you cannot be, I mean, if you are a very impatient person, you probably will find this process a little bit just struggling for you, but that's what I believe, you know, the right way to optimize your campaign in the long run. That's why it takes time, you know. And nowadays, when it comes to Facebook ads campaign, I believe it's the same for other format like Google ads and TikTok ads. It actually takes a little bit of time to stabilize. So usually I would say the ideal period is one week and, Let's say if you launch your campaign today, do not touch anything for a week and come back one week later. Then we look at the number and we determine what to do next. You know, And every week we improve the right thing or the wrong thing, maybe we find out. And eventually what we hope is we, we, can, we can actually have a better campaign moving in as in like from time to time, we get better performance from time to time. Right, so that's how I build, you know, I analyze campaign and I help build a plan uh, for you to move forward and to build hypothesis and uh, you know to identify the variables to test. So like I say, test one variable at a time. You're going to be really patient and you'll get there. So that's what I have for you today. Just in case, uh, like I said, you can actually pause this video and go back to your training. I mean, go back to your ads manager and look at the numbers for yourself. But uh, it could be a little bit kind of like you're not sure whether, whether this is really the right thing, that right hypothesis that you're building. That's why, because analysis is really something that has to be developed over time. I've been doing this for like 10 odd years. So, um, you know, I don't expect you to be, to have the eye like I do and, you know, immediately jumping and you know what to do. So uh, what I'm actually offering here is if you want me to look into your campaign and offer you like what I did just now, you know, oh, this is not right. Let's test this thing. 
to help you build hypothesis, to help you build an action plan to optimize your campaign in a few steps down the road, you can actually scan this QR code. And uh, this is going to drive you to my Fiverr. Uh, as you already know, I'm actually building my Fiverr profile, which is now becoming my one of my top uh, lead generation channel right now. So all you need to do is scan this QR code, buy me a mail, and we can spend half an hour looking into your campaign. And uh, what I promise to do for you is I'm going to analyze and find out and build hypothesis for you so that you can actually gradually improve your campaign um, in a more systematic, in a more proven way. That's what we do. Um, scan this and I'll see you very soon.